Imagine a guy whose mission it is to change how we train. A guy who's on a mission to help us become physical literate. A guy with a contagious energy, excitement and knowledge. This, my dear listeners, is Marcello Paloso, and I'm very happy to have him here as a guest in this podcast episode. We will dive deeply into his ideas and his mission to figure out how also you can become more physical literate. Let's go. Hello and welcome to a new episode of the Lehms Praxis podcast. Today I have a guest here that I'm very happy to have here because I think it will be a very nice conversation that we will have. Today here is Marcello Paloso from Italy and Marcello and me met the first time I think something around 10 years ago. I'm not 100% sure which year it was exactly but I would say it was like 10 years ago and uh, we both have a parkour background and both evolve from there. Many people in the movement world know Marcello. It's very difficult not to stumble upon him because he has some very interesting ideas, but at the same time, very beautiful visual content that he's showing to the world. So, Marcello, I'm very happy to be able to invite you here to the podcast today. Thank you. It's my pleasure, my honor to be here. Yeah, it's been a long time also that we wanted to have a conversation and uh, what better place to do it than uh, here in front of the whole world. Yeah, nice. And I, I, I got quite a few questions. We will go also through the questions from, uh, from the outside, from the listeners. But we will start with the present. Like, what is your practice currently or what what actually is your practice, Marcello? How would you describe it to someone that doesn't know what this whole thing is? Like someone on the street, what, something that I feel is one of the most difficult exercises. So now I let you, uh, let you do this most difficult exercise. You're getting me stuck in the hardest question in the beginning. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Actually, um, it is very clear. I'll try to make it as relatable as possible to people. So what I'm doing, I'm trying to offer a process and also I am uh, going into a process myself uh, as comprehensive as possible into um, physical activity. Okay, you can imagine physical education uh, for the sake of developing the mind and the body harmoniously. Okay, so uh, people can think of what they were doing in high school when they were actually going into physical education. They were touching upon a lot of different fields. So uh, where if they were lucky, in Italy, actually, a lot of people were just, you know, playing soccer and, uh, or, and, and be left there. But in general, we were touching upon things like going into gymnastics or so acrobatics, and then going into some sports, so training some dexterity, some problem solving. Uh, we were going into, yeah, you know, climbing. We were doing all sorts of things. Uh, and I believe this to be a very powerful approach towards the physicality as a whole and not uh, going into one specific discipline and uh, uh, identifying yourself with that specific discipline, as I believe we are way more than only this. So overall, I'm interested into uh, developing physical literacy. Uh, and it's a term that comes from uh, Canada that I really like, and it means basically becoming a literate, so learning a language of movement of your body. Because what happens is that we are in a way... Um, connected to this body, but we don't know how to use it. And this, everybody knows this very well. Uh, many times, especially when you see also kids growing up, the problem is never as much like, you know, strength or developing mobility or this or that, but it's how do you use the connection between the nervous system and all the different parts of the body so that it can coordinate well and can perform certain actions. Okay. And then on top of this, I, want to use this uh, approach towards physical education also to live authentic experiences uh, as i believe everything must go through the body in order to be uh, really powerful uh, for example you know uh, 
you can uh, once you can uh, climb well you can also do a trip to the mountain and live a very powerful day with uh, your friends and family and uh, you can and this authenticity will also build the relationship because uh, when i say for example i trust you well i can only trust you if you for example uh, showed me in some way that i can actually do so for example so uh, if there is a, if I'm, I'm holding by a rope that you are holding, uh, if I'm hanging from a rope that you're ho holding, then I know that that level of trust will be there, will be built through an authentic practical application. And this creates some bonds also that are unconscious, that are way stronger than words alone. Okay. Um, and then obviously on top of this, um, all this practice is also, uh, a powerful way to work on uh, our awareness. No? So being present in every moment and making sure that uh, we are actually enjoying uh, every bit and piece of life that we get to live. Because, you know, uh, without uh, anything practical that we can really touch by hand, I feel we are missing out and we might be uh, living a life that is very, very much up there, uh, you know, disconnected from the from the beauty of the of the uh, of the pleasures of the skin uh, and of the powers also of uh, the body itself okay mm, yeah so this is as a, as a general perspective uh, usually with the, with people and um, i'm mainly working on for uh, people that are approaching um, at the beginning i am mainly working towards Mm, building a better performance, a better health, uh, a better uh, resilient structure, resilient mind, etc. Whereas, and yeah, and um, yeah, really going down this path of physical education. But when I'm going uh, with my students or for myself, we are really uh, considering all that we are doing as life, as a big adventure. And by immersing into our adventure, we are going into a hero's journey. So we are going through a process of transformation. We're going through a process uh, to reach, uh, to discover who we are and to also reach congruence. It means to create a match between who do we wish to be and who we are. No? And this, through this process of transformation, there are a lot of things that we, we can discover uh, and, yeah, and, and figure out about ourselves. And there is nothing that feels more powerful because it's actually, it's your realization in the same way as a flower wants to blossom. Okay. I am, uh, I, I want to uh, expand my abilities into whatever I can, uh, I can do as a human being. And uh, it, there is a lot of pleasure that emerges out of that. And nature always re rewards with pleasure things that are meaningful and powerful. Then, of course, on top of this, as we're going through the process, we're not doing it alone, right? So we're creating a lot of connection with the people around, which I believe it to be also essential because without this synergy, so without this uh, uh, working together, uh, this term from the Greek that I really like, uh, we can also understand our role into a society, into our little uh, movement world, into society, into our little uh, movement world and so forth right so this is again a little bit uh, on the general perspective but we can go deeper and deeper the physical literacy would you say this is a place like something that you can achieve that you have it that you can say i'm physical literate or is that a process is that something like would you say about like some people that you know like they are physical literate and about others like ah they have some more work to do is this something specific or is this more on the level of an idea so i think certainly physical to achieve a higher level of physical literacy is always possible so it's definitely a process but we can also uh, i believe consider that there is a base at which people should get and this base mm, uh, goes on the level of knowing a certain amount of skills uh, that are installed in the body, having a certain amount of capacities. Uh, so capacities in uh, making sure that the body can sustain certain stress, stresses and adapt 
without breaking down. So a certain resiliency, a certain, a certain capability for doing things. Uh, on the level of dexterity, as in motor control uh, as a whole, so being able to coordinate the different body parts in order to achieve a certain outcome. That is not necessarily problem solving, but it can be uh, different, for example, being able to dance a song. Okay. And dexterity, uh, dexter uh, from yeah. my understanding, dexterity as a like synonym for how fine something is. So actually I'm using the, the, the approach and the definition from Bernstein, um, which is not the one that is most uh, used because nowadays when people talk about dexterity, they talk about, um, Yeah, fine motor control. So for example, I'm very dexterous. If I can uh, perform a flick of the pen or if I can juggle some balls, right? This is the dexterity, the way it's, uh, it's considered. But actually Bernstein was looking into dexterity as the capacity to resolve motor problems uh, in a universal way, in a correct way, in an accurate way, uh, and in an ingenious way. And uh, this means it's really... Uh, how do you face the complexity of the problem that is coming to you and how you, do you respond through this active principle? Uh, and this is uh, very, very powerful. And I'm, I've been basing what I do a lot on this because um, I believe this is really the, the, the quality that makes us human. Uh, it's, the, it's the quality in which we, that makes us shine uh, as creatures, right? So... Um, Uh, for example, well, because also nature went into a lot of uh, directions into uh, exploring the passive principles, for example, putting a, a carapace, like a, um, a shell on the outside, no? so the exoskeleton on creatures, so that it would resolve all the problems that would come to it, right? So like no predator can enter, okay? And then it would just eat grass or, you know. Uh, yeah, so it, it wouldn't really have any issues in theory, but then what happened is predators developed ways to enter inside the shell, okay? And so actually it didn't work that well. But then the other project of nature was to work through the active principle. So you put the skeleton inside, okay, only, and on the outside it's very easy to kill this creature, right? So you can, you can pierce the heart with a needle and you're gone. But Uh, the, uh, at that point, the nervous system started to develop so that we developed a certain way to a certain uh, rudimentary intelligence, a certain memory, and also a, a dexterity. So the capacity to resolve problems. And this made us very, um, very, very, you know, powerful and uh, beings because it meant now we could uh, craft objects, we could go out, create strategies, we could do a lot of different things, right? Uh, in order to survive and to, uh, and to continue on the, on the process of uh, the techne, no? So the, yeah, that eventually became technology. Um, so, yeah, so this is what I believe uh, made us who we are. And I believe still until now, it's relevant to push this direction as much as we possibly can, because there is no creature that is coming close to our physical dexterity. And even if we think, and of course it's, a, it's a, also a cognitive ability, but what is it not? Because the body is a condensation of the mind and the mind is an evaporation of the body. We can see them as, the, as, as a constant process, right? Of, uh, of pieces that are communicating. So actually it's really our whole dualion, our being, that came together into this, uh, yeah, into this uh, uh, wonderful uh, uh, essence, in the, into this wonder, wonderful essence. And eventually, yes, I, I want to cultivate it as much as I possibly can. So through the movement practice, I'm trying to go there without going into, like, into the dexterity that is so far that is, it becomes an abstraction, okay? Like for example, okay, how do we get to the moon? Okay, now this is a problem that will require for sure some physical skills because you, you need to type on a computer, you need to write on paper, you need, but uh, now it's really disconnected from the original dexterity in a way because it's really higher, higher level of cognitive abilities. Uh -huh. So there's something about immediacy that you deal with things that are in front of you that you can touch? Yeah, yeah. So I deal with, uh, actually, 
if we can consider the high high level of dexterity as a, you know like a quantum physicists or theoretical physicists that at some point are are really going into uh, the depth of things, but they they also have basically no way to test the theories. They are studying the theories, and but the the, the lower level of dexterity, which is from where everything started, is a stepping stone. It's actually a, a fundamental, and it's it's the uh, how do you have it? You can consider it to be like the the, the essential physics from back in the day, right? So. Uh, studying the forces, how do they manifest into the world? And you, you literally, you know, do experiments where you're pushing objects somewhere and you see them occur, right? And you are, you have this practical uh, approach, this practical, uh, uh, yeah, this practical um, uh, immersion into reality that at some point is lost. Okay, and I want to bring it back because it's something that is that grounds us, and it's something that reconnects us with the. Uh, our roots uh, that um, yeah will eventually also solve problems on the higher layers. For example, uh, if you are yeah, if you if you have a certain anxiety, okay, you have anxiety because there is an animal coming towards you, or you know that it might come at some point. Then the animal comes and goes and leaves, okay, this predator, and then your anxiety disappears. But when your anxiety is not tied anymore. To the, to the practical situation of the animal coming, but it's a sophistication of things that might happen in the future, but also not. It might become very convoluted. It might become very difficult to eradicate, uh, right? So if we are bringing ourselves back into the present, I think we'll step away from a lot of neuroses. We'll step away, away to a, a lot of psychosis. We'll... Uh, We'll have a de definitely a better mental health because we also evolved in connection to nature, in connection to practical things. We are not meant to, for example, stay in a lab studying a star from far away and not seeing the light of the day. We very well know that we need to be outside, put light, uh, light in our eyes, uh, have, have purpose in our daily living, in the everyday. We need to sleep. We need to do all a certain number of things in order to have our body and mind fun function uh, efficiently, right? So dexterity is bringing us back into the moment, uh, in, into something that is very practical there, present, and it's uh, yeah, very healing. And what you just described is also what you mean with authentic experiences, if I'm correct, yeah? Yeah, completely. Authentic as in really based in reality. Uh, in in the, in the reality, not a metaverse, <laughs> or or you know, but uh, not because I've got anything against it. I mean, there there are certainly good things about it, but we can also get lost in there. Uh, and uh, why? Because it has it doesn't have it doesn't follow the same large scale synergies that were created uh, through nature, right? So uh, by reconnecting to nature, going back. Uh, into our reality, um, I think everything will just fall into peace. Um, now, uh, yeah, this is, uh, you know, it doesn't necessarily mean you need to go out into, uh, for example, into the forest, even if obviously it's a powerful experience to do it. But you can even just go back to your own body, to your present and uh, right now. Right, to reawaken also all the symbols that are present inside the, the mind, the symbols of experience, all the archetypes that are present inside. For example, you have the, yeah, like I told you, the hero journey. What is the hero journey? Basically, you are, you are starting in one position, then little by little you need to face some challenges and then go back to the origins, but changed because now you made some experiences, you, you, um, you understand, you understood something knew about yourself, you had to face challenges, etc. Okay, but as you're going through this process, there, there will be a lot of uh, emergence of emotions, there will be a lot of, uh, of, of um, choices to make, uh, and you will encounter a lot of archetypes, as I was telling before, that are present inside the mind from a practical perspective, and this will recharge them. And as they will go back into your mind, then you will have a better understanding of also your place into reality. And this is uh, potent, 
I've seen it happen. So if, uh, and on every level, you know, like as an authentic experience can be, I'm taking the people we are going down to do spelunking. Okay. And uh, when you come out, you have almost a rebirth because you're really going down and facing uh, like the claustrophobia and the sensation of not uh, being able to breathe that you might have had deep inside the body when you were a baby. And then as you're coming out, you're breathing back again life. And what happens is that you start to appreciate way more the same act of breathing, the same act of being out here in the, in the open space. And uh, if you never do, you, you may lose contact with these parts of yourself. And then actually your comfort zone will start to become smaller and smaller. The problem is really like not, not necessarily, okay, I need to step out of my comfort zone. Yeah. But if you don't do, if you don't try to expand it, it is just going to get smaller to the point where you're sitting on the sofa and you need to go to the kitchen to get something. And now you can't do it. You can't bring yourself there because it's very tiring. Understand? So, uh, and this is about tuning your system to a place, uh, where things uh, have to happen in accordance to our evolutionary biology. Okay. So uh, I want to, yeah, I want to uh, fulfill everything that is present inside. So does it make sense with these authentic experiences that I was telling about? I think it's understandable definitely for the listener and to help to help us understand a little bit more concretely what is happening at your trainings, it would be very interesting if you could choose any workshop that you um, taught recently and tell us a few things what you did there. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, for example, connecting this to what happened in uh, Amsterdam, I was hosted by the hidden by Hidden Body, Rich and Yori. They are having great community there, uh, and I every time I'm going there, I'm, I'm trying to bring a little bit of my perspective. And what what did we do? So practically on the first day, on the Friday, with a short with a small group, we went on these uh, great adventures, right? On uh, this hero journey. So we went to. Uh, do some urban climbing, so building, traversing some bridges. And uh, it was very powerful because uh, everybody had to face all the, emer uh, all the things that were coming from the inside. So they had to deal with fear. They had to feel with the frustration of not being able to climb certain things. And uh, they, they needed to deal with the, uh, your, uh, your presence in a group and, and the synergy of the group. So helping someone else to conclude the task because we were doing it all together uh, and we were applying all the skills that we had learned uh, previously. So we had to put in place some dexterity that we had to develop uh, from before. Okay. But also, yeah, also on the level of capacity, when we were traversing, maybe you would feel, well, my forearms don't have enough gas, right? And I need to go back and train at the gym. So now I know how can this help me? You know, and it gives a certain finality. So it becomes teleological in this sense. It means, yeah, really something that has got finality, has got meaning. Uh, and uh, yes, so on this first day, we did a lot of, this, of these different explorations uh, using all the different skills in order to live these experiences and to uh, observe the internal state and to learn how to manage all the, all the things that were coming out of the internal state. So for example, you're starting to get scared. How do, which breathing techniques can you use to calm yourself down? Which visualizations, uh, which, um, maybe talks can, could help, uh, which types of techniques may be coming from, uh, Ericksonian uh, hypnotherapy to, uh, yeah, to put back the system into a, a situation that is more manageable. Um, and, uh, and then of course, yeah, as I was saying, applying the skills, observing how, how much are you physically prepared and fit to perform a certain task and how do you handle all the conflicts that are happening in a group. Uh, and so, which, which is another skill by itself. And also how do you enjoy together this moment of bonding, uh, through a very practical uh, situation. Okay, so this was the first day with a small group of people and it uh, was really about this uh, hero journey. And then we went back uh, into the Saturday and Sunday uh, into something that was way more concrete. Okay, so uh, concrete and, and also um, 
more accessible for everyone. Okay, so uh, for example, we worked um, a little bit on the walls to try. So uh, what do I mean working on the walls? In doing some strength training with what is there, what is available. So we train some pulling strength, some pushing strength, okay? Learning how to traverse, learning how to hang, brachiate, and swing, uh, which are fundamental hum uh, human uh, synergies of patterns in a way that we want to install in the system. Um, yeah, and, uh, and then on, always on the walls, we did a few riddles. So I presented them with some uh, physical problems. For example, okay, you need to reach this position. For example, I don't know, hanging upside down on the wall. And they needed to find a way to reach it, okay? Uh, so we addressed, in a way, with the walls, a layer of physical preparedness and uh, this dexterity we talked about until now. Then we this went... This is a wall outside. So a wall outside, just yes. for an, a wall outside. Yeah, a wall outside. Now, um, if a person doesn't have a wall, uh, this same work can be done on a bar, okay, indoor, but a place where you can hang. We don't really mind if it's a, if it's a wall, if it's a bar, if it's a rope, if it's a ring. We always want to have a, a, a also like a, a perspective towards this layer of hanging, brachiating, swinging, uh, you know, being, uh, being with the, your ha hands hanging somewhere and the rest of the body uh, falling down. And because it's something that is rooted inside of us, it takes care of uh, the joints health, but not only, like, for example, we know that is very um, good for the shoulders, very good for the spine, etc. but not only. I believe really it's one of these things that the moment where you go and do it, you immediately, a, a smile starts to appear in your face because, well, we've been, we're primates. I mean, we, we, we've been climbing trees since, for, trees since forever. So when you go back to that state, there is just something in, unconscious inside that enjoys the, that process. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, and the, the Greeks have got this uh, techne basileus, so the fundamental technique uh, that is... Uh, that uh, was summarized in a sentence, which was follow the smile. And for as much as it sounds something uh, very simple, and, but it always had a grain of truth in my eyes. So if I, if I like something, there is something for me now, and it builds my confidence. It builds, uh, it builds uh, my directions, etc. Now, if one only follows pleasure and doesn't address effort and doesn't address also the things that it doesn't like, well, he also can end up unbalanced. But I believe all the shadow work and the work that is done without the smile um, should be approached when a person is ready, not at the start. Uh, uh -huh. Yeah. That, this I find an interesting point. I just want to give it a yeah. moment like this, poof, because I, I, you have, you say so many interesting and beautiful things, Marcello. So yeah, I really already yeah. feel like ah, I need to listen to it a second time. There's a lot For of sure. things that why well, I want to give the moment to breathe in my mind. And this is something that, this is this is an interesting statement. So uh, I I uh, I mirrored yeah what you said. Yeah. So you said that the beginner should practice in a joyful way that where this smile is present. The advanced person can also additionally practice things that are <laughs> with a sour face, let's say. For sure. I think so completely. And why am I saying this? Because you want to first know your strengths to then being able to face your weaknesses. But if you don't know who you are, uh, what are your inclinations, what are, which are powerful, uh, what is your... Uh, yeah, your unique aspects that are um, that make some things easier for you, and you're only going to the bad stuff from the beginning <laughs> into the difficult stuff, then I feel you will end up very frustrated and hating what you do, and you will just drop out. That's what happens. I've seen it happen a million times. And also, it starts to create a lot of guilt for not going out to practice. It starts to create a lot of, uh, yeah, of fear, of not being enough, of uh, yeah, a lot of, uh, yeah, it starts to create all these psychological mechanisms that are 
you know, that are, are tied to shadow work that you can overcome, but once you can do it. And, you know, generally also, this is something that uh, I believe drives our life as a whole. We have our personalities. For example, me and you gravitated towards parkour. Why? Probably because we are very high in, we are in, um, we are very open to experience. Okay. We are, uh, we have a certain propensity towards risk. We have a certain propensity towards novelty. We are probably relatively low in uh, withdrawal. So we can, we, we, if there is a task, I don't know. I'm, I'm so, I think I'm, I'm not sure. I need to look again at my big five, but I'm very open to experience. I'm very, very open to experience. Yeah, yeah. Like I, I haven't, I have seen like 30 tests of people <laughs> and I don't know of any person that has the same openness to experience. Yeah. Like so, then me, I'm really yeah, at the top there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I feel it's normal that we gravitated towards there. And then what you do once you found yourself because you blossomed into that, uh, into that natural path, I feel at some point uh, you feel, okay, but I can expand into some realms also that are not specifically me, like my, my, uh, my, my inclination 100%. Because out of this expansion, I can understand others and I can also feel like I'm rounding the edges, right? So I'm going into wholeness, uh, into achieving something that is beyond the construction, like the, uh, the only preference of ego consciousness, which is usually, uh, you know, some, some, this, all these peaks in personality, that's what it is. And if we instead we try to go, uh, a step beyond, we can try to really look, look beyond the curtains. And where every time I do it, I feel, ah, uh, there, there is now something, something is calling me from there. There is a curiosity towards who I am not, no? And, uh, who I am not. And huh. every, yeah. And, and this also allows me to understand better who I am and what can be my role inside the larger scoop. And out of this tension between who I am, who I am not, I, discover uh, humanity so not not me not you but uh, humanity as a, a total uh, like a, a, in its totality in its uh, in its species and uh, of course this creates powerful yes yeah, sensations of uh, uh, vicinity for everybody uh, compassion and love and uh, willingness to be together to believe in each other to, uh, to understand that we are different and that we can coexist within the different opinions that we have. And I'm sure, for example, that uh, if we would discuss a matter, I don't know, a political matter, we would not agree. But this not agreeing is great because your idea might be better than mine in some conditions. And if I know this, then I can hold your, your, you as somebody that can teach me always something in, in a spe very specific moment or through my personality, I will be able to teach you something in some situations because it's more fitting. Okay. As a, as a, you know, like the main functions, um, right. And through the movement practice is no difference because it's just, it's a mirror of the larger schemes. So if I, every time I'm going into my, uh, into my practice, I want to first no, okay. I'm good at dancing. I love dancing. And, uh, I, I, when, and I love dancing and I love to do a lot of, um, yeah, like, um, soft motions. Okay. <clears throat> and, uh, I really dislike any, uh, game sports or, uh, I dislike, I don't know, fighting. And, uh, once I'm, I became a strong dancer. Now I can continue to expand in these realms as well, uh, to round up, to round up. Now, uh, obviously, how do you make, how, how do you figure out that you're good at something? Well, you need to have a wide gamma, a range, uh, of colors to pick from. And this is also where the movement practice in the beginning comes into place because I tell you, okay, I don't tell you, okay, choose between red and blue. No, I tell you, choose between red, yellow, blue, you know, pink and black and white and this and that. And then at some point you'll tell me, oh, okay, I prefer white, pink and green. And for, so, and you start to cultivate more and more this passion of yours. And then at some point, once you also are topping these ones, as you continue, of course, to, to develop everything, if you're, if you're a training movement, but you're specifically 
now going deeper down into that, then you'll feel, okay, now I'm ready to go to the next step. And the next step is this shadow work. The next step is uh, addressing your inferior functions or your, the, the aspects that you less like. And this, I believe, to be very healthy because it carries no um, obligation from the outside. It's something that comes purely from an internal voice, from our aletheia, so the truth from the Greeks. No, so uh, you're, I know that now internally there is a certain, there is a feeling that is telling me I've done enough of this. Uh, and for as much as I will always love this, I can now go into some things that I am less good at, like naturally. And uh, <clears throat> that will create a, a, a process that is impossible to, to break. Because every time I go into fighting, which is the furthest away thing from me, uh, because I'm uh, genuine. I mean, I, I, first of all, I, I don't want to hurt anybody. And uh, fighting obviously comes from, from that place. Obviously, then it's, it can become a, a, a playful communication, of course. But originally, that is the root, right? It's war, is battle. It's, uh, it's predator or uh, prey. Right, it, it comes from that le level. So there is not much of that inside of me that is burning. Um, so I find it hard to go there, um, or to find a certain uh, like anger or aggressivity inside of me. There is none. I mean, out of right. So that's why also I never gravitated towards that place. But at some point, I felt like okay, I'm ready to also embrace that side, and uh, I did it. It didn't feel good, uh, but it was very useful. And it was, uh, yeah, powerful. And, and over the years, I started to integrate also this uh, conflict uh, between uh, myself and other people. And it, it taught me how to also resolve conflicts in a better way. It taught me how to handle like harsher relationships, also physically, etc. And uh, it was uh, yeah potent. And, and now I'm integra integrating more and more. And definitely, I feel I'm in a different place now. I can uh, honestly say I I I enjoy it because I know what it can give me. But if I started my if let's say I started with parkour, I started with acrobatics, the things I loved. And uh, at some point, somebody told me, okay, now go into wrestling, like uh, this a project that we will be doing this year in uh, Elbron in Germany. Uh, yeah, working with the Olympic wrestlers and uh, we will we'll go deep down. But back then they would tell me, I go there and drop parkour. I would feel frustrated. Uh, I would not feel uh, good that I'm capable. I don't, I would not understand why should I do this. Uh, and uh, yeah, it would just put me in a place where I'm like, I'm doing it because somebody else is telling me. And even for someone that is an extrovert like me, so that I'm really taking energies from the outside to feel myself, uh, I, it would be too much because it would be creating friction with the internal world. I understand. So the idea is that you expose people. I'm just yeah. mirroring again. You yeah. expose people to uh, a, a broad variety of material yeah. in the beginning. Then they can see what is for them to first practice where they, mm -hmm. do they feel drawn to? And exactly. then at the later stage is what you call, I like this, how you call it shadow practice. Yeah. I haven't heard this expression before. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, because I believe there is uh, an overlap now between psychological principles and uh, physical principles, because we said that the mind, the body are interconnected. So every time you're doing shadow work, for example, on the, on the psychological side, you are addressing, for example, your uh, attachment styles. So that you developed when you were a kid. No? So am I anxious because my mother and father were doing this to me? Okay. And so I need to address that. But then you don't see this because it's pushed under the surface and, and it's, it's unconscious. Okay. But uh, in the same way as different family dynamics as, um, <clears throat> yeah, that you don't see, uh, there are a lot of things that are part of this shadow that we are, you know, pushing away. Uh, what is your, for example, your inner child might have a lot of uh, things that uh, need to be solved, but until you point the finger there, uh, yeah, you're, you're not going to see them. They're just behind the curtains. And 
again, you should be ready to do shadow work. The, the fundamental thing is to, yeah, to turn on the light in the room. You need to have a strong armor. <laughs> you, need to, you need to have your sword ready. You need to be able to, <laughs> to, to face whatever is appearing there. Uh, but if you are naked with uh, no abilities, you turn on the light, a dragon comes, boom. Maybe now you're depressed. Maybe now you are, you know, you are really uh, low in morale. Maybe it creates a trauma. Maybe so. I think we also need to be very caution, cautious about pushing people into one or another direction and really listening to what they enjoy, etc., and what they feel drawn to, and at which stage they are, and really trusting in them. One thing that I do, yeah, I offer all these different possibilities, and I, I give them modules that they can choose. Because of course they will, they will need to study projects. They cannot do it all, all of a sudden. And when they see the list of projects, they tell me, yeah, I, I would love to do this, this, and this. Okay. And yeah, and I, I allow them to study this. And over the years, they will feel like, ah, okay, this actually I thought I liked. I don't like much. I prefer this side or that side. Obviously for, for my side, it's a big responsibility because I'm trying to offer as many things as I possibly can while always keeping everything connected to this philosophy. But it's difficult because I am myself unfolding the, this, the, this. I'm doing innovation, so I'm unfolding the situation. So actually, for example, on the level of skills, of dexterity, of capacity, so physical preparedness and motor control or coordination, I developed a lot of material. But on the level of communication, which can be on the positive uh, side of the uh, of the archetype can be dense, but on the on the negative side of the archetype can become fighting. Right? It's the two polar opposites that I'm really that I, that I am going into myself right now. So I cannot offer much to my students at the moment. But I ask them to trust me that we are also going to introduce this material into the school. And if they want because to, because you study, can. Uh, apologies, Marcello. I don't want to interrupt you uh, because. You can offer them your process that you are going through, no? And uh, it, it yeah. just reminded me directly about the, the times uh, in in my teaching history when I felt I somehow I don't feel like I feel far from complete teaching this uh, with my experience and so on, but still people are asking for it, mm -hmm. and it's now the moment that it's happening. And okay, let it happen and from my experience actually it works um unexpectedly well mm -hmm. like to be still like you know just a, like, just a one step ahead basically mm -hmm. and to share directly yeah 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 i i went one step more okay i can share with you i'm not like kilometers ahead already completely also i i this is something that i made very clear now we just did an event uh, in Italy with all the close students, etc., And I told them, you know, we are doing innovation in certain fields and we'll present also this material uh, soon. And some of the material is cutting edge of what we are doing, right? And uh, me and my team, and uh, we will not be as competent as, uh, you know, for some materials we worked on for 15 years. But it doesn't matter because we're not starting from zero. Uh, I feel this like what you were describing is a problem only at the start when you are actually, when you actually don't have much knowledge. No. So, uh, you, you cannot really connect many pieces. Uh, I don't know if you, it, it can, uh, click with you or not. Like for me, it was, it's something like this. When I, I am, I'm now really feeling like I'm wearing the cape of the movement teacher. I know what I'm doing. Um, uh, I mean, obviously there is a lot of things that I don't know, but uh, <laughs> I am also confident in a lot of things that I know. So when I'm going into, let's say fighting, I am looking and fighting through certain principles of motor control and coordination, for example, or through uh, the configurations that the body can enter into with the more or less amount of tension. I can look into a lot of principles that uh, obviously we can talk about. Uh, but they're present inside of me. So I, I know what I can always offer in the, also the process of unfolding a new field together with someone else. Okay. And, uh, so I don't, I also feel like I don't have to be, you know, at uh, whatever level, because it's also, it, it, there will always be like a better 
BJJ practitioner than me. I mean, actually, I, I don't think I will ever be a great BJJ practitioner. Uh, I, can, I can become a decent one, but uh, not great. And same goes for, uh, for I don't know, boxing, for, uh, I don't know, Taekwondo, we went into for wrestling, all these things. Uh, same as somebody that devotes uh, their lives to the hip hop culture will know way more about how to uh, make art through graffiti, uh, you know, like uh, spit some good rhymes <laughs> or dance, <laughs> right? And then I, then I, I will be able to do, but I will still, I still want to become decent so that I can introduce some of that world that I really like. And it's very rich into what we do, but without disrespecting also the fields, this is also something that uh, comes many times. People are writing, ah, but you are not this or you're not that, but relax guys. We are, we are actually, we are loving like every field we are going into. We are paying extreme respect. We're studying the history of it. We are uh, going into the depths. We are trying to enter the communities to learn from it. And we Is are- Is there this criticism coming? To me? Is there criticism? Yeah. All the time. Yeah. You don't know how many, how many messages I get on Instagram it's just, or emails like, uh, yeah, what do you think you're doing? You're just stealing and watering down fields. And uh, this is what the, you, you're calling movement, but it's not. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. But, because, but, but then I asked them one thing that I always, and they never answer, but I asked them, but do you actually have an idea what, of what we do? How, where does this come from? Maybe you should investigate <laughs> why this is making you so angry. Because obviously it's a projection. It's not in a, that I'm doing anything. There is something there for them to learn. <laughs> uh, but it's, uh, it's really, uh, yeah, interesting to observe how also all these uh, psychological processes go. What is a projection just for people who don't know? Uh, for example, uh, well, we, uh, we created the projection of uh, demons, no, in mythology. Uh, so that we could say, okay, there is that or this demon that made me do something because I was possessed by it. Okay. Or, uh, that was there. Um, and it possesses all these qualities that are definitely not mine, are there of the demon. Okay. And uh, it, and, and we did the same also with the good things. So all the divinities are you know, projections of our good sides and we are uh, we are putting them out there. So we are kind of taking away the responsibility of being, of being humans and being a, a big contradictory ball that needs to balance out on all these uh, internal tensions that it has between the, the opposites. Um, and what we need to do, you know, and this is a very, very brave thing to do, I believe, is we need to take all these projections and pull them back and say, ah, actually this was not coming from the, a uh, demon of anger. It was not coming from the demon of fear. It was not coming from, you know, you doing something to me, but actually people are, are always angry with me, for example, because I am always angry with them. So they're just mirroring what I'm doing. Okay. And you pull it back and you try to go to the source and say, okay, there is no divinity and no evil, like no devils, but it's all human aspects. And let's, let, let's uh, admit through with the vulnerability that we don't have, that I, I'm not, uh, that I don't yet have a level of consciousness that is large enough to contain all of this. And I'm pushing it out. And I need someone that can also guide me and help me to <laughs> put them back in. And I need support. I need help from the people around. And I need compassion towards myself because I know that I will do a lot of mistakes. Uh, right. As, uh, as I'm going through this process of pulling back the projections and, but obviously what can I expect from posting a video on Instagram? But I, I, <laughs> I like, I like to dream that actually the whole humanity is rising, right? I need to, I, no, need I to. just thought like all the things that you're saying are not happening in the internet, <laughs> you know, like, yeah. because there's no real connection. And there's this, I just, this morning I talked <laughs> with, uh, with a colleague here from Berlin as well. Also about this topic about the internet, like 
It's a bit frustrating sometimes. I, a yeah. few days ago, I thought like, oh, this is like the devil is uh, like the, <laughs> the is possessed by the devil. Like what's happening? Yeah. But on the, end, in, on the other end, it's just a small minority of people that is destroying a little bit the experience. Yeah. But I mean, again, if, if we're looking at them with the, the right eye, there is something that we can learn about the mechanisms of the mind. Because many times also I, I notice, I, yeah, I, I see that for that person, uh, for example, me posting a, an acrobatic maneuver and not calling it, uh, I don't know, capoeira, uh, it's a trigger. And uh, I, I ask myself, okay, so first of all, why was it was a trigger for him? And how, and how do I get triggered? Because I also do, of course, uh, right? And I start to unfold. So I, I, I use it. But of course, like some, some days I just open the phone and like, oh, oh my God, let me, <laughs> let me out of here. It's just, it's not, not the moment. Now it's time to go uh, for a run. It's time to play the cards with uh, my wife and the, <laughs> or look after the baby. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Marcello, so we were at the present. Shall we look a little bit into the past? Like I, I personally uh, like to keep that usually um, like not too stretched out to being in the past, but I think it would be interesting to hear how did you got to the place where you are now? Like what was your evolution in terms of connection to your own practice? Like what yes. were your reasons before and what are your reasons now? Yes. Uh, I will answer this question in a second. Uh, I wanted to address, just finish uh, but very quickly, without going into the wide scheme of things, uh, about what I was telling about the event. So just uh -huh. practically. Okay, yeah. so uh, we were at the walls. Okay, so we did some climbing, we did some strength work, and then we went into uh, acrobatics. And then acrobatics, and we learned how to maneuver the body into a lot of different positions and to build a connection with an object. Okay. Uh, and then after that, we went into balancing skills. Okay. So we learn how to focus the mind. We learn a technology like, a, because obviously there is some risk involved in there. So we learn to be present through a, an outside environment that re required us to be present. And we trained this fundamental coordination uh, ability of balancing. And then we went into some lightness skills, which is this approach that I have to uh, athleticism, but uh, um, going more into the complexity side of the matters instead of going into uh, something that is uh, more straight, like the classic uh, uh, running for 100 meters, you just run and that's it. Okay. Because if you, so what do I mean by this? For example, you, you are jumping on the staircases at different uh, um, steps that the partner is calling for you. You're using the walls as a stepping, as a step, as a step off, you are learning how to jump while you're rotating in the air. You are, uh, there are situations in which you, you have to simply uh, handle the, uh, handle the partner creating some disruptions, etc. So really, uh, for sure, we have in there jumping, running, walking, and uh, you know, crawling all the, the classic displacement actions, but really trying to observe them from this dexterity perspective. So in a way, through this event, we touched on athleticism, lightness skills. We went into acrobatics. We went into climbing. We went into living these authentic experiences, uh, went into balancing. And we, I tried to create a little bit of a, of a situation that, uh, in which people could experience a lot of different types of states of the body, a lot of different uh, abilities that they, need, they needed to pull out of themselves uh, so that eventually they can get a grasp of what the movement practice might be, okay, um, for them. Mm. Now, obviously, it's just a, it was a, a spark in the, in the work with the environment, but uh, uh, yeah, this was what I brought there. Obviously, in some other events, I, I more was focusing on the body. In some other events, it was more focusing on partner to partner connection, etc. Okay. Uh, but I always want in every event to offer a certain, um, uh, yeah, a certain amount of things happening so that people can really start to uh, get the taste of the final recipe. Uh, because if you instead, 
for example, go to an event and the only thing is back squat, uh, even if you have a movement perspective behind it, then I feel there will be something missing. Okay. So this is, uh, yeah, just to, to answer practically into the things that we've done in this event. Okay. Now I can continue with the other. I just didn't want to leave it hanging. <laughs> yeah, thank you. People. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So uh, about where I was coming from and how, where, where, I, where it led me. Well, um, yeah, I, I believe a lot of it started uh, because of my uh, personality, right? So I knew that uh, I wanted to have some challenges in my life. I knew that I, I needed to prove myself to myself and others. I knew that I wanted to discover, uh, to discover, yeah, who I was. It was, I was really curious to see, uh, where, um, exploring my physicality could, could lead me to. And, uh, uh, and also, I also, I, I, I was very drawn to this uh, idea of having a body that was capable. It always made sense. Uh, very capable. Like, uh, you know, when you see, when you look at, uh, I don't know, the, uh, some, some, uh, people in the movies, I don't know, Jackie Chan or <laughs> things like this. Well, back in the day, we, we all saw the Yamakazi movie or <laughs> it was, uh, it was great to see that uh, people could actually achieve, or even when I was looking, uh, watching circus, um, Chinese opera, I, w I could see that people were doing all this, uh, uh yeah, these motions with such uh, effortlessness and uh, ease and uh, at the same time power and uh, vigor and it uh, it carried a certain aliveness there and i loved it it was really like talking directly to my skin it was making my skin crawl all the time i would see this and i was like yeah i need to i need that i need that i don't know where this is gonna lead me but i need that this is and i so without too much thinking about it it was really an intuition so something, a, a gift from my unconscious. Uh, I said like, okay, let's go out and start to learn. So I was just, you know, at the beginning, trying everything. <laughs> I was coming, uh, yeah, jumping off walls, climbing things and trying to get some acrobatics on the, uh, on, on the grass outside on the <laughs> garden of my mother. I was 14, like trying to basically survive the day because I was doing some crazy things. And <laughs> yeah, and, and of course, it was very silly. Like if I think back, it's really almost, uh, puts a, this, you know, like this cringe smile on my face. Like, <laughs> what the hell was I doing? You know, but I also know that it was coming from an authentic, spontaneous place. So I respect it. It was sacred, even if it was very cringe. <laughs> uh, and I actually have some videos back then and I can't watch them. The, 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 uh, I look maybe at some point I will release some of these clips, but I, it's I really nice can't. that you still have it much. I lost all my, I lost all oh, my no. old videos. I have no idea where everything no. like before I was 20, I don't know anymore where it is. Damn. <laughs> you have to maybe look it up. Yeah. Because uh, yeah. try to find it. I, I have the clips from 2006 <laughs> until today, basically almost every week mapped. And, uh, mm. I tell you, yeah, it's great. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And I, and I tell you, you don't want to see this clip. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's hilarious. <laughs> but uh, anyway, you know, it, it also allows me to see on the level of my physicality, but also the level of my awareness and consciousness, how it evolved. Okay, anyway, so I was attracted by this and I just started. And I was going into this and I found that parkour was really calling my name uh, because it made sense, this uh, displacement in space, uh, something that I always liked. Okay, I can climb, I can jump, I can run, I can uh, crawl, something happens, I can help, whatever. It was just a dream, a far dream idea. And uh, I connected to this and uh, I went in there. And this basically took me on the first uh, journey, literally. Right? I started to travel, I went to London, I went to France, I went London to Parkour Generations back then. Uh, to the guys that were doing a great job and meeting the communities from there. Then I, will, I went to France to uh, look at the, the places where everything started. So the pilgrimage at Lisa and Avri. And then I was going, you know, to, I came to Germany and I went to Spain and I went to, uh, to, to meet some friends. And then, you know, we started to organize uh, uh, meetings in Italy, like national meetings. And little by little, I helped bring this into 
into the yeah into our uh, uh, country. And, and you trained quite a bit with um, uh, with Laurent, no? Laurent, yeah, also, also, also. Um, yeah, actually, I didn't train so much with him. But ah, okay. Yeah, 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 but I mean, we we met for sure in the in in something like ten ten times for sure <laughs> uh, over the years. But uh, it was uh, yeah, I mean. Mm, uh, Back in the day, I was training with Blaine. I was training with uh, uh, Dan. I was training with uh, the people from the community. And then I went to, when I was going to Denmark, I trained a lot with the, um, I had the community from over there, from Sweet Movement, uh, et cetera. But yeah, I also don't want to go into this because people that are not into the parkour community, they wouldn't care <laughs> at <laughs> all. Uh-huh. What are they yeah, yeah, talking going... about now? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, so yeah, just know that I was traveling all the communities and this was really powerful for me because uh, I had to break through the, um, the comfort of my, uh, the comfort and also the conditionings of my city, of my, uh, of the place where I was coming from to see through the veil of all this um, and see, you know, and start to take in the, uh, the opinions of others and the, uh, the, the way they were practicing and the principles behind what they were doing. So I continued to expand this for many years to the point where I said, okay, this is really my path and I want to study sports science. And I went down the road of uh, doing my uh, bachelor here in Italy, in Verona. I did uh, three years. Um, and, uh, but my practice didn't change. So I was still turning parkour and practicing there and expanding on, uh, yeah, for sure, some acrobatics and athletics, but may- that was the main thing that I And then after that, I was very disappointed in uh, sports science, what they taught me. Not because it was a bad uni, but it was very much tied to theory, but theory that is not bound to practice. You, you see, like something that is too far away. Like, for example, we are studying glycolysis uh, or the, the, the energy mechanisms inside the body. It's too far. So... Let me, let me study some theory that I can directly apply. Maybe some biomechanics, maybe some physiology, but connect it to breathing techniques that I can use. Do something that I can really learn then I can introduce into my practice. So in the hope of finding something that was, yeah, more, I went to London, to Twickenham, and I did my master's in strength and conditioning there, which was the closest thing that I could get to, from, to, to movement because, of course, there was also some... Uh, you know, when, when uh, training a football team or whatever, uh, a sports game in the conditioning part, you train a lot of footwork, you do a lot of athletics and you do a lot of things. So I said, okay, let's see what they have to offer. And it was actually a good experience because I learned a lot. It was very, way more practical. Uh, but again, it was not movement. It was not a, a more general perspective. They were always bound to the strength and condition. Now, all that you do is only physical preparation. And I was like, I like physical preparation, but I'm coming from a place where we are constantly solving problems from here and there. And many times, the reason why you cannot do this, it's not because you don't, you're not physically prepared enough. It's because your cognitive abilities don't reach. So how do we reach that? How do we improve coordination? How do we... And, I, and I was like, okay, I need something else. And then I was, at that point, I was reaching the end of my 10 years uh, in parkour. And um, I, I felt... Mm, yeah, I felt that I knew all that I needed to know about the field uh, and to, to continue to learn. Well, I could have, um, I could have uh, innovated, I could have done innovation, uh, but it was something that was not really present because the, the field is relatively closed anyway. And it's good that it's like this because it's good for people to have something that is more defined. Mm. So it was like, okay, so let's, let me start to expand. And I expanded into, from the parkour, I went into what I call the environmental movement practice. So what is the environment? What is the environmental movement practice? In essence, I go out and, and I use the environment to discover things about me. So I don't care about, so much about necessarily being able to do um, applicatory tasks but they are more about developing myself. So for example, I want to, I use a rail to train balance. Okay, but I can also train balance in, in other ways, on the ground, for example, and it would still be okay on a, on a, a step, on a whatever. I'm not bound anymore to, you know, I need to walk on a rail because I need to reach from one point to another. No, 
I don't, I'm not, I don't care so much about that. I more care about developing this quality inside of me. Okay. And this was a, a strong passage for myself because I also started to look at the environment as, situ as situations that were available and recurrent. So instead of always looking for spots to find new things, I fixed the spots and I started to pour into the spots uh, creativity to, so that uh, new uh, scenarios for the growth could uh, appear. So, for example, I have, um, uh, I, I have the staircase, I have the bar, I have the wall, a wall outside, I have a rail, I have a step, I have the ground uh, with some chalk I can write on. Mm, and this doesn't change. What changes is me placing some tasks on it. For example, while there is a staircase, okay, now so you can create a game to train athleticism in there, jumping, landing, working on the mechanics of it, um, dissipating impact, doing hard prehab, doing all sorts of things that can happen on the, on the stairs. But it's not about, um, you know, like in the original dream of parkour, you know, like you, you want to make sure that you can jump from one wall to the next and you can escape from things and you can, you know, or, or run after. Like this is less relevant because I just thought, well, uh, for sure, I like the idea of being strong to be useful and to be able to, uh, or to be able to use the skills that I have in, in an applicatory situation. And definitely something that we, we do there, but in the everyday, it's something that I need to experience myself, to transform myself, to discover pieces of me, to allow the emergence of all the aspects that are present inside so that I can do also this uh, shadow work that I can do, uh, that I can, I can correspond to the, to the idea that I have of myself and, you know, and achieve more congruence. And all these things are not achieved by just learning skills or just learning to, you know, run a display more efficiently. Okay, so, uh, so I, 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 yeah, I expanded uh, that field in this way into the environmental movement practice. Then I was okay, so now I also need to expand way more. And I was like, I, I have to look into other fields as well, uh, like motor control and coordination as a whole, uh, and, uh, but also throwing, catching, crawling on the ground, learning how to dance and learning how to move my body. Etc. And as I was starting to really go into this research, I is the moment where I also met Ido, Ido Portal, and uh, and I I started to study with him, and I studied with him for a few years, and to the point where I entered the team, and I was in there for three years, and it was a very uh, a very important moment of my life for sure. I learned a lot, and we shared a lot, and uh, of course it was I was very uh, influenced by uh, Ido's ideas about uh, what, uh, how can you construct a movement practice, which was what I was looking for. So it really was a match. So it, and the, we were really resonating at the same frequencies at, at, the, at the time. And I was uh, kind of really also pushing a little bit aside all that I was doing to study and to become a, st a student. And it was, uh, yeah, very proficuous. Um, then eventually I... I had to continue my path uh, and it's just the way things go when, uh, you know, when, for example, this also, also back in the, in the day, in, in uh, let's say in the, in the East, you always had uh, two, two ways. So you actually study with the school and you stick to it for all your life. Uh, or at some point, if you feel you have got something different to offer to the world that is uniquely yours and you feel this push, then there, there from there stems another school. And it, it continues, right? And this is what I felt it was needed. And uh, so then I continued onwards. And yeah, and now I am in a point after many years where I'm really embracing this uh, pursuit for the physical literacy. And I feel like I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm on this boat trying to resolve the fundamental issues that I've, I've seen as I was growing and also to offer perspective on some aspects that I wanted for myself and I could never find, not in full. Why could I never find them? Because if the path ahead of you is clear, it's probably someone else's. That's what Jung said, right? And I, I, I love it because 
I, 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 uh, at the beginning, I thought, well, somebody can give me this, give me this, but how could someone give me my path? <laughs> it cannot be, right? I, so in this way, also, we need to trust into the dignity of being humans and in, into the dignity of our personal aletheia and our truth that we will eventually uh, reach what we want to reach and leave to uh, the ones coming in the future. Uh, yeah, uh, this that uh, we, we are, uh, uh, I mean, our, our process of individuation, our process of uh, yeah, discovery of, our, of, uh, of ourselves. Mm. And this will inform other people and it will inform other, other um, yeah, generations in the future. And I feel, yeah, I have a great responsibility for doing so. And I, yeah, and I hope more and more people will do this. Um, I think it's very much needed. People can definitely find themselves into existing schools. Or if they feel like they can't, they should continue onwards and create their own. So I'm sure people are like, coming to your school, they can find themselves. They can, you can offer them uh, processes and situations in which they can observe everything that is present inside, for sure. And they can also uh, contribute through reflections, through it doesn't have to be like practical material that they, they are contributing with uh, and, and discovering uh, more and more. Uh, but for some, maybe me and you, it's, it's impossible to not, uh, yeah, to not create something that has a frequency that is yeah, uniquely that. It, it, you wouldn't resonate exactly with another. Um, but that's just the way it is. Uh, that's just the way it is. And it's not like, oh, well, but we are, we are better because we have our schools. And no, it's not that, really. It's that, that many people maybe were looking for what I'm doing, and we were all looking for the same thing, but I, I found some keys to open these doors. And now they're they are coming with me on the boat and say, okay, we also like this, <laughs> right? And so let's, let's, uh, let's do it together. Let's continue on this path. And some others, yeah, will come and will say, no, not for me. This stuff is uh, really not there. And so that's also why I don't worry anymore. Like who, uh, like uh, doing, I don't know, marketing or this or that so much about, because I don't want everyone. I want the people that resonate with me. Uh, they will eventually find me and uh, we'll do this process together. Because if I have with me someone that is not aligned, then I feel I would be doing a disservice to them because I might be pulling them into my process of individuation, but it's not what they need. So why, who am I to convince them that my way is better? Cannot be. Because at some point, their internal dissonance will, will slap them in the face and say, brother, go or sister, go back <laughs> to your path. And they will actually, they will start to develop a lot of maybe hatred towards me because I pulled them into something that was not their own. And actually this happened over the years because also I didn't know a lot of this stuff. So I, I used to, I used to convince people that this was the, a better way, <laughs> but because I generally thought so, and I didn't consider a lot of other, uh, let's say pieces in the, uh, in the, in the chessboard that uh, then came to life. Thank you, Marcello. Let us go for the last part into the future and there could be maybe a combination of two questions that people asked. So one person asked, um, how will your movement practice look like in 10 years from now? And another one asked, what are your thoughts about movement and physical education on a bigger scale? For example, school, work, society. I have the feeling that maybe there's a combination here yeah. of these two questions yeah certainly well i uh, well i also hope so and i'll tell you why do i hope that um well first of all i got to a place where i know where we are headed and we have a plan for the next 10 years a very clear plan that that we will uh, now need to unfold now obviously uh, it it is not going to be uh, uh, it's, it's not it's not like we have the exact steps but we have a vision and we have a, a yeah, like the, the, the compass is pointing in a very clear direction. For example, well, first of all, in terms of my practice, I already know that I will explore different disciplines, pull them in, 
for the sake of understanding better and better and defining better and better what this movement practice and approach can be for people uh, and and for myself and this is a uh, this is a comparative approach right so we are studying a lot of different fields and seeing what emerges what appears that is in common okay and uh, we are um, and it's actually uh, like all compars- comparative sciences uh, are doing this and uh, we're also pulling this in it's very interesting um, yeah so on the level of yeah my, my personal practice uh, for sure, now we are investigating into fighting, we're investigating into dance, we will expand the amount of skills that are present, we will expand the amount of uh, games and situations for dexterity development, we are going to expand on the principles of coordination and motor control that are you know, underlying everything. We are now working towards uh, and also practicing towards the, the creation of a whole new uh, physical preparedness branch that is based on uh, the phases of the body, so-called. So uh, considering that the body is, um, is like soft matter and the, the more or the less tension you insert into it, the more it can behave differently. So we, uh, it, can, it can become more tensile, okay? It can become more elastic. It can become more stiff. It can become more colloidal, like a padding-like motion if it doesn't have much tension into it, etc. And we are after creating like a milestones and a process to really uh, make sure that people can address uh, the totality of the being without getting stuck into one specific uh, quality. Like for example, strength work, okay, I do back squats, front squats, I don't know, like push-ups and pull-ups, but what about the explosive ones? What about all the different types of planks? What about, you know, like uh, all the uh, shaking of the, of the arms or the vibrationary action that is also present and how do you train that how do you make it progressive etc so in a way we are expanding this field uh, trying to create what is relevant so it's like what is needed for a movement practitioner uh, that is not borrowed but is in a way crafted out of the knowledge that is uh, out of the comparative knowledge from the different disciplines because creativity should reveal something new into the world Okay, so this is what we are attempting to do, revealing something new that is relevant. Um, then we are, um, yeah, so filling these gaps and also trying to give it a better and better definition to what do we do and what we don't. Uh, and uh, because also like saying the movement practice, yeah, it's everything, it's false because it's resonating at your frequency. So yeah, maybe the movement practice is everything, but your school is doing something specific that is responding to the way you are feeling the world. So uh, yeah, so I think we, we are defining more and more what we're doing. And through the 10 years, you know, the, we have a, a clear plan. Okay, so this year, for example, building the intensive, we will do a lot of work on uh, going into the coordination and the motor control different principles. Um, the next year, we're going to go into a rhythmicality and musicality and harmony and how do you bring this into the body and et cetera, et cetera. And we continue. And of course, this is also, uh, yeah, and, and expanding things that were already there that ne- require expansion. For example, last intensive, I brought a lot of work on the sensory motor skills. So how do you use the eyes, the vestibular system, uh, yeah, in, into a variety of conditions and how do you improve the use of the senses, which is something that is also un, unseen, okay? Or, or in a way, it, it's not uh, much discussed. Uh, and we, so we will continue to expand this, um, but expand inside our box. If we manage to do this um, well enough and we, we really can give precise, um, yeah, like... Uh, precise order, order, no, it's cosmos in the Greeks. So literally our galaxy. Well enough, then I will also, I'm planning to write a book on the topic. I'm planning to start to also share it on the wider public. <clears throat> and hopefully, and, and we are already in contact with some, um, uh, you know, institutions that maybe we will be able to bring this into the universities. We'll be able to bring this into the schools. We'll be able to actually do a revolution of physical education. So to the point where, people will not be playing soccer 
left by themselves somewhere while the, the teacher is playing with the phone. <laughs> but they will actually do a process so that we, they will love what they do. And, and literally, this is also the point I, we want to create. We want to create something that is that people will, will look and will say, okay, it's cool. I like it. I'd love to try. And it can be good for me because it's, uh, it's, it will make me healthy and we will improve my connections and <clears throat> with people. And if we do this right, then a revolution will start. Now, uh, but I'm not ready yet to, to, write a, to write a book. I'm not ready yet to make it uh, fully on for the largest possible public. I'm not ready yet because we, are, we need these 10 years to, um, to expand into definitions. And uh, because also me, like uh, in terms of the innovation in the field itself is not much. Like I've been doing this uh, since I was 26. Okay, so now I'm 32. Uh, yeah, so, you know, it's six, seven years now. We're, I'm involved in this and I believe at least, I need at least something like 20, 20 years to really become a master in this and to then uh, pass it on. Um, and I don't want to, and, and it's, a, it's difficult because there are so many things that we are discovering, so many things that we are unfolding and I believe that can be useful to people right now if they were made also more simple. But I'm afraid that this, uh, uh, this summary would actually water down the, the something that should not be watered down now. Because once it, it instead reached its uh, critical mass, then we can extract things and put them in books, in this, in there, and we can go to the institutions and communicate. And uh, well, I mean, also I, I did my, my titles uh, in uni to have a recognition. Uh, yeah, not that I ever used them much because also I always knew I wanted to be self-employed. I wanted to be an entrepreneur, but uh, they, they will be useful when we will talk to the universities, when we will um, communicate directly to the, you know, to the States, maybe to the state, maybe here in Italy, maybe we'll manage to do it in Germany. We have, uh, maybe we'll manage to do it, uh, you know, in France, maybe we'll be able to manage to do it in the US, but somewhere this thing needs to start. And it's already starting because people that are finishing sports science and uh, that are interested, they're coming to us. I, I see this and they're coming and they're telling me, please te teach me something that is actually new and practical and, and interesting, you know, and, and also can allow to, to discover something about myself that is not, uh, yeah, like, uh, the, 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 the process of, uh, I don't know, like writing an equation, um, as you're stepping on a, on a force plate. There is no, nothing that is further, further away from aliveness than that, I feel. You can enjoy it, you can become a physicist, but not a movement practitioner, not, not a teacher of movement. Not, this is what we are lacking now. Okay, and um, so, yes, I have a high, high vision and, a, like a, and, and we are daily, daily working on this. Like every morning, uh, four hours in the morning, and two hours in the afternoon, either going out to practice, doing research, studying. Uh, we are here for the long game. We don't care if some days we are skipping the practice. Maybe we are just moving a little bit half an hour to make sure the body is good. And then we, we study and we work and we do this and we do that because we have this vision. And some other days we are outside the whole day to unfold, to practice, to unravel. For sure, there is something that is always going, but we are not in the rush of, oh, wow, I didn't train 10 hours a day. It's like, who cares? It's not about training. It's about having this aspect that can really reveal beautiful things about uh, ourselves and the, the world as a, as a whole. So if this will be achieved, then I will uh, have achieved the other half of uh, my highest pursuits in life. The first one was connection and uh, finding someone that, uh, uh, that I could share infinite love and uh, um, with, that also concretized now in the form of a baby uh, and, uh, and the community that could uh, support all of this and, uh, yeah, and the communication between all the parts. And on the other side, like the second that I wanted is to leave a mark, to leave a legacy, to leave a, 
yeah, like to leave my contribution because I feel I'm here for this. And I want to believe that I'm here for this because if I don't have this, uh, this, this aims, then I would have no meaning. Take away the aim from people, uh, you take away everything. We must have this vortex that is pulling us in a direction or another. And then out of that, out of the resolution of the tasks, out of the resolution of the problems, uh, out of our growth and the time passing through our skin, then we, we realize, we, we find our individuation and we pass it on. And it feels great to pass it on. Uh, yeah. And uh, every, every where I'm looking is really telling me that this is the right track for myself. Because the internal sensation are telling me, yes, you wouldn't want to do anything else. Put me in an office, I die. I mean, doing something that I don't like. Put, put me in, a, put me in a, I don't know, an office to, 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 to do some math. It's not my path. Put me in an office to uh, study the stars. I would be very interested, but it's not my path. I know it's this. So I go full in to, until I will have the last air to, uh, to breathe. I'll be involved. Marcello, thank you very much. I think there's nothing left to say, actually. Thank you for sharing your, your inner world with us thank and you. your vision. And uh, people can, can find you, of course, on Instagram or via your website on the Instagram. It's very visual. So that's if people have an Instagram account, that's definitely recommended to go there. It's yeah. Paloso dot Marcello, am I yeah. correct? Yeah, 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 it's, yeah. Your, it's definitely your last name uh, first. I don't know if no. there are other people with the same name. Yeah, yeah. But... No, I think this is, a, <laughs> this is the unique account. And definitely, yeah, they can find me on the website. So www.marcellopalozzo.com. And uh, in general, I think, is there going to be a description under this video? With, with the, uh, with, Maybe we with can the links and stuff? Yeah. I don't know. Definitely. But, yeah, this will yeah. definitely be there, Marcello. Okay. This, will, this will definitely be there. So Excellent. people can just go into the description and, and click on the link. Yeah. Yeah. Great. And uh, also one thing that I wanted to say, thanks for offering the space for conversation. It's something that I don't do often. And uh, actually these days I'm very much like inside our community and just talking mm -hmm. to people. And I know that uh, a lot of the things we talked about, they're very distant and sometimes they feel alien and you don't understand. But uh, on one end, I am pursuing this way of the scientist that is very clear and definite. But on the other end, I'm pursuing this way of the mystic where things are undefined by, but by definition, but they allow for a lot of emergence of intuitions and emotions and you know, f uh, feelings and sensations that are as important as the rest. So if you resonate in some form, so maybe this could be for you. And for sure, they're going to get clearer, but they will never get fully <laughs> clear on that end because this is just the nature of things. So yes, and thank you for inviting again. And I hope we can do it again. And maybe next time we can talk and I, I'm not going on monologues. <laughs> This will not be our last time here on this podcast. Definitely no. not. We will have more, more meetings here. All right. Thank you very much, Marcello. Thank you, Dawson. Talk to you soon. <laughs>